Hello, and welcome to Up to Speed with Online Teaching. My name is Jonathan Haber, and this short course on creating effective assessments and assignments for online courses, we're going to focus in, th in this video on the topic of goal setting. Now, if you recall, the backwards design process I introduced in the first video in this series focuses on four steps required to create effective assessments. Uh, the first step is goal setting, followed by planning, content development, and analysis. Taken together, this is the backwards design process. In this video, we're gonna focus on the first of these steps, which is goal setting. Now, you can have different sorts of goals associated with different sorts of assessments in your courses. Uh, for example, you can have mastery goals in which students demonstrate understanding of a body of knowledge or the ability to perform a skill or set of skills. An example of an assessment with a mastery goal might be a math quiz that will determine if students can perform calculations related to a specific set of math standards. Another example might be a writing assignment that will determine if students can construct an argument for or against a government policy. This is another example of an assignment uh, that is tied to a mastery goal. Uh, and here's an example of an assignment that can cover different mastery goals. A team presentation can be used to evaluate the content knowledge of each member of the team, but it can also be used to evaluate the collaboration communication skills of the team as a whole. So these are all examples of assessments and assignments built around mastery goals, but you can have other sorts of goals. Another sort of goal might be engagement. Okay, this is where students are given the opportunity to demonstrate that they are engaged with the material they are learning. An example of an assessment with an engagement goal might be a do now on graded quiz or short writing assignments. Uh, a lot of K-12 teachers use these at the start of class to introduce students to what's gonna be covered, allowing them to become more engaged with the material. Uh, in your online courses, uh, you may wanna use a set of polls delivered during an online lecture or recording of a lecture. It gives students the opportunity to express their opinion or demonstrate levels of understanding Again, these short polls could be thought of as brief assessments with engagement goals. Uh, and then you've got a formative assessment delivered during class that provides the teacher information needed to customize instruction. Uh, hopefully in subsequent uh, lessons, we'll talk more about formative assessment, but for now, keep in mind that formative assessment also can serve as uh, an assessment with an engagement goal. Okay, then you've got preparation goals where students are prepared to perform well on subsequent assessments and assignments. An example of this might be a practice SAT or AP exam that gives students experience taking a standardized test, both with the kind of questions that are on the test, but also with the environment where the test might be taken. For example, time limits and uh, other criteria where a standardized test might be delivered. Uh, you can also have preparation goals uh, take the form of short writing assignments that allow a student to practice skills they'll use later to write a longer paper. Uh, or math worksheets or online assignments that give students experience answering questions that might end up on a graded exam, such as a final exam. Now, as you are putting together your goals, you should ask yourself a set of questions. Uh, for starters, what do you want students to get out of the course? Once you understand the knowledge and skills you want them to get out of the course, you need to ask what's gonna provide the evidence that students understand content or master the skills you want to get them out of the course. With that in mind, you can then ask how are you gonna collect that evidence? And finally, what thresholds will determine if they've achieved your chosen level of content understanding or skills mastery? And to give you a quick example, let's uh, think about this course you're taking now, right? Uh, this is a course on how to create high quality assessments and assignments for online courses. You know, what do I want students to get out of this course? Well, I'm assuming many of the people taking this course are teachers who are having to navigate this sort of new landscape of online learning. And I want them to understand that elements of the professional test design process can help them improve the quality and effectiveness of their online courses they're creating during the coronavirus crisis and beyond. Uh, what will provide the evidence that students understand content or master skills? Well, in this case, I would want, by the end of each lesson, for you to demonstrate understanding of the principles covered in each lesson. Okay, how would I collect this? How would I collect this evidence? You know, well, I, I have not gotten around to it yet, but if I were to do so, 
I would collect that evidence through a series of short online quizzes associated with each lesson. And these will likely be added to the uh, site that includes these videos uh, in the near future. But, you know, this is an example of how I'm going to collect evidence using entirely sort of online quizzing tools. And finally, what's going to be my threshold to determine if you've achieved the chosen level of understanding? Uh, well, in this case, I would want you to pass each quiz, uh, and that would establish you're ready to move on to the next lesson. Okay, so now that we have an understanding of setting course goals and the goals for particular assessments and assignments, we're next going to move on to the next step of the backward design process, which is planning.